Compositing applications such as Nuke afford us the possibility of pushing our art around at a much easier render time than in Maya. Here's how this plays out. For example, in Maya, if we render depth of field, it's baked in that image, and while it may look wonderful, it's also an increase in our render time, and it's very hard to tweak afterwards. It is rendered in. If we bring in a beauty pass and a depth pass here in Nuke, adding on depth of field is easy, and we have an interactivity possible that's simply not available in Maya. That, coupled with a smaller render time, allows us a great deal of artistic flexibility. So as long as we have that flexibility built in our pipeline, we can work fluidly in a compositing application like Nuke and really fine-tune the look of our imagery. I'll start out here in Nuke by reading or importing in my images, clicking in the node graph and pressing R to read. I browsed into the Images folder in the Chapter 6 Nuke folder in the Compositing folder in the Exercise Files, and now I'm going to read in my images. What I can do in Nuke is to select an image or a sequence if it's available, and if it's a sequence, this Sequences button will be checked, recognizing a sequence as a file. I'll select and click Next down on the bottom of this Read Files dialog. This way I can queue those for import. And if I've got images or sequences that take a while to bring in, let's say they're large or long or have a high depth or something similar, Nuke will sit there and process them all. So I can queue them once and then let Nuke run with it for a bit. I'll select the next one, the beauty image, click Next, and work my way through, picking all of my images, clicking Next, and finally when I'm ready, open on the bottom of the dialog. Nuke brings in all my read nodes. I'll grab my viewer and slide it over so I can see all of my different read nodes. Alternately, I can simply grab them and pull them over. Now that they're read in, I can get them stacked or merged correctly. Each read node has its own properties here on the right side of Nuke in the Properties tab, where it shows the file and where it came from, if we're dealing in a proxy, what the color space is, and what happens before and after. Are we holding? Are we looping? And so on. What I'm going to do on each of these, once I grab them and space them out, is set that color profile correctly. I'll double click on my beauty pass and set the color space here to Rec. 709. That's the color space for high def TV, and that's what I had rendered to out of Maya. I'll make sure I do this with all of my images, double clicking on them and choosing 709. And this way I'm operating in the same color space all the way through. Now I'm ready to merge. I'm actually not going to merge in depth and mask. I'll use those differently, so I need to get the occlusion and spec pass merged properly. I'll pull the beauty pass over, select the occlusion, and press M for merge. In Nuke, we're operating in an A over B workflow. What this means is that all of our nodes where we have two things coming in are always A over B in some fashion. So hitting M for merge with the occlusion selected makes that occlusion image automatically the A in that merge. I'll drag the B arrow right onto my beauty pass, and I'll press 1 with the merge selected to show it in viewer 1. There's that occlusion, and it's merged over, ready for changing the operation or the blending mode on this image. Now I'll pick my spec pass and do the same, pressing M for merge, and making the B of merge 2, merge 1, so that the output of merge 1, the combined ambient occlusion and beauty pass, feed in to merge 2 and have the spec laid over. I'll press 1 to show it, and now my merges are all set up, and I'm ready to start in with operations or setting blending modes and opacities, and then into things like masking for color correction.